This video will uh, fill out the bottom section of um, so the bottom flap of section number three in your unit 10 volume flipbook. This is a very important section for you to understand class. I hope you spend the time to listen to the audio as I step through the different parts of this particular uh, um, section. So the essential question is how do I sorry how do scale factors affect perimeter area and volume measurements? Now we've already talked about scale factors in previous units and we've already seen how scale factors affect perimeter and area. We're going to be adding to this, what does a scale factor do to the volume of a three-dimensional shape? So these first two tables are going to be review, and I'm not going to fill those completely out. I'll do some of the work. I'll have you, hopefully, you spend the time and fill in the missing numbers. So first question, how is the perimeter of the rectangle affected by dilating the rectangle with a scale factor. Here's our rectangle, and I've already filled in some of this table for you. We've got four sides of the rectangle, left, bottom, right, and top. I've written down the measurements of each. We know that opposite sides are congruent. So if the left is four meters, the right is four meters, bottom is six meters, top is six meters. The total perimeter of this rectangle, the total measurement around the outside is 20 meters. What happens if we scale this rectangle by a factor of 0.5? Remember class, we know that 0.5 is a reduction. We're going to also scale it by 2 and scale it by 3. Those will be enlargements. We expect the perimeter to get smaller here and larger here. Let's find out by how much smaller or bigger it gets. So the original left side was 4 meters. 4 times 0.5 means the new left side will be 2 meters. 6 times 0.5, the new bottom will be 3 meters. 4 times 0.5, again 2 meters. 6 by point times 0.5 is 3 meters. Add those up, we get a total perimeter of 10 meters. Now, the next question asks you to fill out what the multiplier is. And I want you to understand mathematically, what is a multiplier? We're asking the question, how do we get from 20, our original perimeter, to 10? What is the multiplier that gets us from 20 to 10? It's actually mathematically very easy to find. I want you to add this to your flipbook right above the essential question. To find a multiplier of two numbers, divide the new value by the original value. So we're going to take the new value and we're going to multiply it by, or divide it, by the original value. So 10 is our new perimeter. We're going to divide it by 20. That's our original perimeter. And our multiplier is 0.5. So the multiplier here is 0 0.5. <clears throat> now this next line, what is, what is the multiplier written in exponential form? What I'm looking for is, can I express this multiplier as a number that has a scale factor in it, and certainly I can. This is just 0 0.5 to the first power. <clears throat> 0 0.5 to the first power is 0.5. You'll see how this plays out in a moment. Now the next two columns I would like to see you do on your own. When you find out the final perimeter of each of these when we're applying this scale factor, this perimeter is going to end up turning into 40 meters this perimeter is going to end up turning into 60 meters and that means the multiplier here 40 divided by 20 is actually 2.0 60 divided by 20 is actually 3.0 take a look class that's just your scale factor if we write this in exponential form we can just express it as 2.0 to the first power and 3.0 to the first power power. So you can see perimeter is affected directly by the scale factor. <clears throat> if I have a shape with a perimeter of 50 and I apply a scale factor of 2, the new perimeter is going to be 50 times 2, which is going to be 100. So scale factor affects perimeter directly. All right, let's take a look at how this plays out with area. And I expect you guys to fill in the missing numbers of the table. How is the area of this rectangle affected by dilating the rectangle by a scale factor? Same table, but now all I need is length and width because I know area is length times width. The length of this rectangle was 4. You can use whatever number you want. I could use 6 for length and 4 for width. It makes no difference. 
I said the length is 4 meters, the width is 6 meters, the area was 24 meters squared. What happens when I apply a scale factor? Well, same thing here. 4 times a scale factor of 0.5 is 2 meters. 6 times a scale factor of 0.5 is 3 meters. We multiply length times width to get area. That means our area is 6 meters squared. What's our multiplier here? Let's take a look. Let's take our new area, divide it by our original area, and we get 0.25. So our multiplier here is 0 0.25. Now watch this class. This is pretty cool. If I take 0.25, Sorry, if I take my original scale factor and I square it, I'm going to get 0.25. So that means this 0.25 could actually be written this way, as the scale factor squared. <clears throat> as the scale factor squared. You're going to find when you figure out the area, what happens to the area with a scale factor of 2 and 3, you're going to find out that the, that the area here actually becomes 96 meters squared. And for a scale factor of 3, it's actually 216. It grows very fast, much faster than perimeter grows. The multiplier here, 96 divided by 24, was actually 4.0. And the multiplier here, 216 divided by 24, was 9.0. We can write this in exponential form using scale factor. This is just 2.0 squared, scale factor squared. This is just 3.0 squared. 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4. So take a look, class. How is perimeter affected by scale factor? You just multiply your total perimeter by the scale factor, and you get the new scale, the new perimeter. How do you find a new area? If you, if you change the area by a scale factor, you take the original area and you multiply it by the scale factor squared and you will get your new area. 24 times 3 squared will give you 216 meters squared. So scale factor can be used to easily find the new area of a shape. All we use is scale factor squared. All right, how does that work with volume? Let's take a look at volume. How is the volume of this three-dimensional shape affected, or object, affected by dilating it by a scale factor? Well, it works out kind of cool. You'll see how this works. Let's go ahead and do this. This is a rectangle, rectangular prism. I use the same base. Oh, let's put that in orange like I've done before. I use the same base as I had over here with a 4 by 6 rectangle. You can see that. And I just added a height of 5. Remember, class, if you shade your base, <clears throat> the height is always going to be <clears throat> the dimension. <clears throat> the height is always going to be the dimension that is not part of the base. So the height here is 5. Let's find out what happens to our edges with a scale factor. So the length was 4 meters. 4 times 0.5 is 2 meters. The width is 6. 6 times 0.5 is 3 meters. That means the area of the base is 2 times 3, 6 meters squared. We know our height was 5. 5 times the scale factor of 0.5 is 2.5 meters. I'm going to now multiply my base area times my height. So 6 times 2.5 is 15 meters cubed. What is our multiplier here? Let's take a look. Oops, let's move this over. Okay, so I'm not have that right. Okay, so we have a new area of 15, sorry, a new volume of 15 divided by our original volume of 120, and we get 0.125. So our multiplier here is 0 0.125. Class, let's take a look. What happens when I take my scale factor of 0.5 and I cube it? 
So 0.5 to the third power, it ends up being 0.125. So in exponential form, the multiplier can be written as the scale factor cubed. Look at how that relates to perimeter and area. Let's write that a little clearer. All right, you can see that for perimeter, it was scale factor to the first power was our multiplier. Area, scale factor to the second power, or squared. And volume is our scale factor cubed. When you fill out these next two columns, you're going to end up with these numbers. You're going to get a volume here of 960 meters cubed. This one's going to be 3,240 meters cubed. That's going to be a multiplier of 960 divided by 120 is 8.0. 3,240 divided by 120 is 27.0. That can be written as a cubed exponent. This is just 2.0, our scale factor cubed. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. This is our scale factor cubed. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So take a look how we can actually predict what happens to the volume of an object when we apply a scale factor. If I told you this rectangle was going to be scaled by a factor of 3 and I told you the volume was 120 meters cubed, you could just take 120 and multiply it by the scale factor cubed. So 120, let's take a look at this. This would just be 120, there's my known volume, times the scale factor cubed, and press equal, and you can predict what the new volume is going to be. So what did we learn from these tables? You should fill out the rest of this table on your own. What did we learn from these tables? Something very important about scale factor and perimeter area and volume. If you've got an original perimeter and you apply a scale factor, the new perimeter is going to be changed by the scale, oops, that's BF, best friend, not by, changed by the scale factor, I'll just abbreviate that, scale factor to the first power. How about area? Area is going to be changed by scale factor squared. And volume is going to be changed. I'm getting a little rushing here because I'm running out of time, so I write a little mess here. Changed by scale factor cubed. So I can give you the area of an object, and if I tell you, I want you to tell me what the area does, how does it change if I scale it by a factor of 4? You just take the original area and multiply it times 4 squared. If I tell you the volume of an object is, is 1,500 cubic units, and I ask you what happens to that if I apply a scale factor of 3, you would say, well, it's 1,500 cubic units, or 1,500 times 3 cubed, and that would give you your new volume of your new scaled object. So here are the things I want you to see. You need to be able to take the perimeter area or volume of any shape, line, or cube, or cone, or uh, uh, pyramid, or anything, any one of those. If I ask you how does the perimeter area or volume change with a particular scale factor, you should be able to directly find it without having to redraw and recalculate that particular new scaled shape. We can just use the scale factor to the first power for perimeter, squared for the area, or cubed for the volume, and multiply the original measurement by that particular exponent, and you will get your new measurement.